Hi there, Serial Trader here. We'll do an update on the major US indices and looking at the daily chart here on SPX for the uh, overall wave count. So it looks like we're uh, in the C wave now and that B wave uh, extreme I highlighted in the last video at 3155.53, that held. Uh, it got uh, severely tested on the 23rd of June. It went up to 3154.90, so that was uh, basically within one point of me closing my uh, ES short futures position but it did not actually break that level so I left the position in place and now it's been uh, working pretty nicely so as of Friday's uh, towards the end of the day there I did close some of my futures uh, my short futures positions and I left some on and I've now adjusted their stop past break even uh, and let me just have a look here. I think I put my stop. If I look at ES. Uh, I put the stop on the remaining positions just above this most recent uh, swing high here at 3082. So yeah, I got my stop at 3082.25 to buy them back if it gets up there, which is still below the uh, the point where I shorted at. So it's past break even. So that's good. And again, I did take some uh, some of the contracts off. Uh, close to the lows there on Friday. So that's that's good. It's already a successful trade. And uh, if it just keeps trending down as, as anticipated, I'll get a little more out of it. But if it comes up here and stops me out, uh, still, still a successful position. So that's now just going to kind of manage itself. And I'll just see what happens. Uh, okay, but back to this daily chart. So we still need to, for us to consider C complete, we need to take out at minimum take out that previous A wave bottom, which here on SPX was at 29.65.66. So at a very minimum, we have to, you know, break slightly below that and then reverse. But I, I suspect we'll get a more reasonable, at least AC equality relationship, which would be again in the 2800s here, 2888. And then of course we have various relationships, the 38.2% uh, Fib retrace of this whole move up. We have the gap fill at 28.65. And then, of course, if we go a little lower, we have that previous fourth wave low and the 50% retrace uh, in the 2700s here. Okay. Um, oh, we also have a, I'll show it more on the, uh, I think there's some candlestick chart, but we also have another little island reversal there. So on the 23rd of June, we gapped up and then the next day we gap back down and there's that clean island of price with the gap on either side of it. So... We have this initial gap, island gap, which did not get filled. And now we have this second island gap, which also did not get filled. So pretty nice, you know, little bearish uh, reversals there. Just overall complementary to the expected uh, wave down here to complete wave C. Okay, so that's, that's really what I want to go through on the daily chart. Now on the hourly chart, just to update the shorter term wave count. Uh, so we have this initial... It's initial wave one down uh, and then we had this almost 100% retracement but since it didn't actually violate that 3155.53 high the B wave high went up to 3154.90 that could be considered an extremely deep wave two so we got one down two up I think we're uh, amidst the third wave so three of C down I think we're in right now not quite sure whether it's bottomed out yet or not uh, could get a little more down in three of C than expecting at least a, a corrective bounce up here in wave four of C, and that shouldn't overlap with this wave one, uh, wave one low. And then one more leg down at least in wave five of C to complete the overall sequence. Uh, so overall, uh, despite having that extreme deeper tracement, which certainly tested, uh, didn't break the stops, but certainly tested the stops. As I said, I didn't actually have a hard stop in place on the uh, ES contract. What I did was uh, I was just going to do it during the regular session. If SPX was able to trade above 3155.53, I was just going to manually close those ES shorts as something else would have been going on. But since that never happened, I was certainly watching intently when it got real close. But since it never happened, uh, you know, I stayed with it and now it's, it's worked nicely. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the shorter term wave count that I'm uh, working here. So far, so good. Uh, now back to this daily chart. So yeah, definitely expecting a little more downside here, as I mentioned, but 
uh, the next real big position is likely going to be a long trade, you know, getting long once this wave C looks mature uh, of this possibly larger wave two down, getting long for that potential uh, third wave to the upside, right? Uh, yeah. So a wave three to the upside, that could be pretty, pretty profitable if we get a nice entry down here and just ride it. So that's kind of the rough game plan. But before any of that, we have to get wave C to complete and we have to see some sort of uh, reversal off that low to really get confident about uh, positioning for the next wave up. But I'll discuss that as it looks like we're getting closer to a, getting to that point. Okay, that's all I really want to go through there on that chart. Now on the thicker some candlestick chart, nice, uh, well, nice bearish day on Friday, close near the low of the day, close below the 200 day simple moving average. And you can see we've been respecting the daily T line as resistance, whereas on the uh, up move there, it was being respected as support. So that's uh, complementary to further downside. We have the 50 day simple coming into play pretty soon here. Just below 3,000 now, it's at uh, 29.80. So that's easily within reach here. Possibly, you know, stab down there and touch it on Monday or something. We'll have to see. We have this little gap here uh, that I mentioned before, 29.56. So that's closer to the current price levels. And then this lower gap, which I still think has a good chance of being filled uh, at 29.65. Uh, 29, six, no, sorry, 2865. So yeah, that's that's the one in the 2800s. Okay, uh, so we got that. Now if we look at the uh, weekly candle here on SPX, what do we got going on? Weekly candle, so we had this little bounce last week. Uh, this reversal candle is still intact. Now this candle, I mean, I wouldn't really call it a reversal candle. It's just kind of a inside bar, I guess. Let's see, do we actually break... Uh, last week's range. No, he didn't. So basically just an inside candle with a little bit of a bearish tilt to it. Of course, expecting a little more downside here based on the uh, shorter term pattern, but nothing really to speak of there jumping on at me there on last week's candle. Uh, okay, that's SPX. Go over the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the Dow is already very close to taking out its equivalent A wave low, and that uh, comes into play at 24,000. 43, we've gone as low as 24,971. So should be easily attainable, possibly mon Monday or certainly in the next week to, to take out that low. We're currently just close to that 50 day simple moving average on the Dow, well below the 200. So the Dow just a little bit weaker looking than SPX. Uh, but overall, looks like we got the same pattern A down, B up, working the C wave down. And. Doesn't look complete yet. We do have this gap down here on the Dow. Uh, so a couple areas of interest to point out for, for downside targets, I guess, on the Dow would be this gap close at 24,481 and this lower gap close here at 23,370. So there's some interesting levels to look for. Uh, okay. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I'll look at the weekly candle on the Dow, but I'm not sure if there's anything there. Let's have a look. Okay, so that almost looks like a bearish engulfing candlestick here on the Dow Weekly. Let me just confirm that it opened high enough. So this last week closed at 25,871.46. This week opened at 25,865.08. So it didn't quite open high enough for this to be a bearish engulfing, but uh, it looks pretty close to being one. So definitely a bearish candle uh, closed below the weekly T line. That's really all there is to say on the, the Dow. Expecting a little more downside, bottom line. Okay. And we'll go over to the NASDAQ Composite. So NASDAQ Composite, definitely a different pattern playing out here. So even when the uh, S&P and the, and the Dow weren't able to take out uh, even their, their B wave extreme from the last video, not only the NASDAQ take out that level, it took out its uh, origin of A, because of course I'm still working this as being an A, B, C on the NASDAQ, but whereas the Dow and the S&P are, are uh, clearly kind of a zigzag A, B, C down, where the B doesn't doesn't take out the A wave extreme, this looks like a, either a running flat or an expanded flat kind of working here. 
So that's where we got A down, B up to a new price extreme. So B up to new high. Um, and then you'd have the C wave down either to a uh, higher low if it's a running flat or a lower low if it's a uh, expanded flat, which would be more typical. Although the NASDAQ has been so strong, uh, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't rule out just doing a running flat and not even taking out this A wave low. But we'll have to see. Uh, if it does take out the A wave low, I think the nice uh, area to look for a bounce here would probably be this 50 day simple, which it's a moving target, but currently that's sitting around 9,298. Uh, 9, so that's on the NASDAQ comp. But nice bearish day here on Friday, close near the low of the day. Cleanly close below the T line and the 20 day simple. So we should get a little bit more to the downside here. But yeah, just to point out, this is a different corrective pattern than what we're seeing here on, on the S&P or the Dow. Uh, not a zigzag, but uh, more likely a running flat or expanded flat. Um, so yeah, definitely might be interesting to look for a long here if you play the NASDAQ. So I guess your equivalent uh, thing to play here would be the NQ futures uh, since the composite is just a cash index, you can't actually buy it. But uh, you could play the, yeah, the NQ futures Okay, uh, but that's really all I want to mention. Weekly chart here on the NASDAQ. What do we got? I think it's a reversal candle. Uh, yeah, kind of an inverted hammer reversal on the NASDAQ. Definitely expecting, again, a little bit more downside. Possibly not as much as it's just been so strong compared to the other indices, but a little more downside nonetheless. Okay, so that's the NASDAQ comp. And the VIX, so VIX kind of just uh, going sideways here, hasn't really broken out strongly. I mean, it's been showing some signs of life, but no real follow through yet on the VIX. You don't have a real trending uh, move to the upside. So maybe when we get the final C wave low, we'll get a little flash up in the VIX, uh, a little spike and rejection. That'll kind of mark the end of the move. Uh, and then maybe, you know, shorting a VIX product might be interesting but right here the VIX just kind of a no touch uh, just kind of going sideways and showing little jumps here and there uh, okay but on the VIX VIX tool we're uh, in a clear position once again we are on a sell signal so we got uh, VIX above the red moving average SPX below the blue moving average currently that blue moving average is sitting around 3079 uh, and expecting a little more downside, obviously, based on the uh, wave analysis. Uh, so, yeah, basically, bottom line, VIX, VIX tools on a sell signal. So, that's just kind of confirmation that, uh, you know, more downside could be in the cards here. Uh, one thing to look for is once we look mature in wave C, looks like we're bottoming out and, you know, you can count the wave count is nice and complete. We'll be looking for some VIX, VIX divergences. And then... Uh, well, actually, so far, you can actually see a little bit of a divergence developing. It might be too early to mean anything of significance. But currently, uh, you can see from this reference point, VVIX making lower highs, okay, clearly. And VIX, well, let's see here. I guess VIX technically also made a lower high here, but not to the severity that VVIX did. Um... So that's something to watch for. If, if VIX can come up here, make a uh, higher high uh, relative to VVIX, but VVIX can't make a higher high above that previous level, uh, then that would be kind of a divergence in development. And then, of course, you'd look for VVIX to drop below the red moving average simultaneously with SPX getting above the blue moving average. And that could be a nice buy signal, uh, possibly confirming the end of wave C there. But just something to look for. So there's not even a divergence yet. There's just one potentially starting to form uh, but just something to keep an eye on when it's when it looks closer to the time of trying to get in long not yet though okay uh well that should be good for now hopefully uh, someone out there is able to take advantage of this c wave move down it's been well telegraphed ahead of time so uh, you had plenty of opportunity to put on a position to try and take advantage of some of the downside move here and i don't think it's quite done yet either um all right, see what happens next week. I think it's a holiday-shortened week, so or at least uh, the last day of the week is a shortened day. 
in light of the holiday. So we'll see what happens. Sometimes those shortened holiday weeks, not much happens. Sometimes they have a bit of a bullish tilt to them. Uh, obviously, in this case, we're looking for more downside. We'll have to see how that matches up with that little tendency. All right, Serial Trader, signing off.